One interesting thing is he said police are not trained to pull a gun, point it at someone, and not shoot, and then reholster. So they're kind of vaguely stating that if you're going to pull your gun, you have to shoot. And as I explained, the threat was neutralized just by the act of drawing. And so his statements there I find interesting because I personally have seen police officers draw their firearms on people, issue verbal commands, person complies with the commands. In, 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 for example, guy has a knife out. Police draw their guns, drop the knife. Guy drops the knife. Threat's alleviated. Gets his hands up. Police reholster their gun. I personally have seen things like that. I know Bob, see, you guys have all probably seen things like that. The cop watcher contingent here. Um, so he's saying that people, police officers are not trained to do that. So if you see anybody out there, if you see an officer pulling a gun on someone, not shooting and reholstering, get in contact with the person they drew the firearm on, get them in touch with attorney Sean Riddell, because I think that's a lawsuit right there. Because you have this guy on the witness stand saying police aren't trained to do that. That's a crime if it's me doing it. Shouldn't it be the same thing with police? Another interesting thing about Ryan Rasmussen is he's saying, he's saying his police department does not use um, use of force continuum charts and wheels and things like that. There's numerous ones that um, are in uh, firearms training, use of force training. He's saying that they don't use those. But what's interesting is that we obtained testimony that he had previously given just a year prior stating that his department does in fact use such uh, wheels and charts. So now we have him lying to the judge on the witness stand, just as Kate Molina and Todd Jackson have lied to people, just like Benjamin Carenza's on the stand lying, just like John Slaughter's on the stand lying. We've now caught a police officer lying to Judge Thomas Ryan on the stand. So he, Rasmussen himself, I think, has bad judgment because he allowed a mob of people to attack him on a Max platform one time. So it came time for the verdict. And throughout the verdict and the sentencing, the judge said some interesting things. He said, this is not about what other, something to the effect of, this is not about what other people were doing, this is what Strickland did. To me, that indicates that the judge refused to take into consideration self-defense. Because self-defense is entirely predicated on the actions of what somebody else is doing. By, by him saying it's not about those actions, he's saying that he refused to consider self-defense. He said things to the effect of, um, you had other options. I've exercised a lot of those options. No one's explained to me what I should have done. People who disagree with me, no one's explained what someone should do in that particular situation. I'll welcome that in a question and a period. Uh, not right now, during the Q&A, thank you. I was just wondering, what, what do you think the police agenda is? Uh, I don't know, I, I can't speculate to that. Um, I, I, Maybe I'll get into that a little later on. Do you feel like it's a... Uh, I, I don't know. It's a complicated situation. I'll put it that way. But um, So no one's explained what someone should do in that situation. The only people who have explained are people who agree with what I did. Say that I did what I did was perfectly right and reasonable. That includes professional firearms trainers, current and former law enforcement officers, <coughs> military people, they all agree with what I did, completely in line with how someone should act in that particular situation. Um, well, another interesting thing is there is no duty to retreat. You know, there were a lot of these vague references to a clear path of escape. A, I was going down the clear path of escape. I'm not going to turn my back to these people and try to outrun them. I'm weighed down. I've had knee trouble. I have my gear with me. I'm not going to try to outrun them. So that, that was actually ruled in uh, State versus Sandoval, the state Supreme Court, just like in the Kenneth Wood case, ruled that there is no duty to retreat in order to exercise self-defense. Um, this is further solidified by a recent case here in Multnomah County. You guys may have seen this in the news a few months ago. There was a FedEx driver who was driving, he was black, driving on his truck route. Someone started screaming at him from the side of the street, some racist comments of some sort. He decides to get out of his truck. And I don't know all the details. I'm not necessarily ragging on anyone in this particular case. I, I don't know exactly what happened. So he gets out of his truck, goes and confronts the person. The person is throwing a water bottle or something. He punches the guy, knocks him out, kills him. 
That was ruled to be self-defense by the same Multnomah County District Attorney's Office. And in fact, in their press release, they say there's no duty to retreat. So the judge also said, you know, the, the, he said uh, this was an unlawful escalation. If what I did is an unlawful escalation, then by default, he's saying that the actions of the mob were a lawful escalation. And that's the scary part. You know, it, during pretrial um, arguments, he referred to numerous hypotheticals involving a counter protester. Again, I wasn't there to counter protest. He said during the sentencing, when, when I gave my short statement that I believed that I was about to be, you know, beaten and robbed, and smashed on the pavement, he said, you are not about to be pummeled. This, you know, this, you cannot react in the way that you did. I want to know where his interdimensional time machine is. How can he say that without being able to go back in time and observe a different reality where I didn't pull the gun? I don't have that luxury. Apparently the judge does. What's interesting is the judge is sort of inserting his own mindset as if it were mine. My appeals attorney is uh, particularly citing this um, for things that we can bring up for other legal maneuvers. So they're saying that there are 10 victims involved in this for each person who was in the immediate peripheral. Only two of them ever came forward, Carenza and Chaddock. Carenza, the guy who started the thing, Chaddock, the other guy circling around me, not coming up on my... On, uh, my uh, four or five o'clock position. It was the only two people who ever came forward. None of the other people even identified. We didn't even know their names. They had masks over their faces and or they didn't want to come forward. They could very well have had warrants out for them. Maybe they knew they were the ones committing crimes on that day. And, and, and they didn't want to come forward because of that. 11 if you count Sawyer. <laughs> so I have a constitutional right to face my accusers. I was denied that right. So the judge had issued his verdict, guilty on all accounts. And you could hear the air getting sucked out of that room. In fact, there's two people in this room, maybe three people, I think, who were at that when the verdict was announced. Everyone was in shock about this. Because clearly, this is, this is a prime example of self-defense against mob violence here. So by finding me guilty, the judge has ruled that a person does not have the right to freedom of the press. You do not have the right to be in a public area, filming a public event, exercising your freedom of the press. Instead, a mob of thugs with masks over their faces and sticks in hand have the legal right and lawful authority to use physical force and intimidation tactics to prevent you from doing that. I know there's a lot of journalists in the room. That should scare the bejesus out of you right there. Whether you're a mainstream journalist, whether you're an independent journalist, guerrilla journalist, it's a very scary notion right there. It's perfectly legal for them to do that to you. It's a crime if you try to stop them from harming you. And this extends to other things too. Freedom of the press is a constitutional right. Standing on the street, doing nothing isn't necessarily a constitutional right. So I have even more clout to be there doing what I was doing than someone standing in the street. You know, there's been a lot of talk of attacks on people lately, especially with the political violence that's gone on downtown. That was essentially legalized in my case. The judge has ruled that mob violence is legal. So in an effort to try to lambast me, they've inadvertently given carte blanche to the KKK to attack black folks on the street. Because they have masks over their faces. They can have weapons in hand. They're afraid to do that. If the black person they're targeting tries to defend themselves, that's the person who's guilty of crimes. That's the unintended consequence from everybody who was piling on with me in this case. And, and, and even scarier, this extends further. So, so according to the judge, DAs and police, if you did this to them, they would not consider it to be unlawful physical force. If you see a police officer walking down the street, According to the judges and DAs, you have the right to do to them what the mob did to me. This extends to activists, probation officers, journalists, the governor. She doesn't have special privileges over the rest of us. I, I was convicted of 21 counts, 10 felonies of unlawful use of a weapon, 10 misdemeanors of menacing, one misdemeanor of disorderly conduct. 
Now, I understand most of these cases. I'm sure you could vouch for it. <laughs> most of these cases involve someone who's robbing the liquor store, someone who's trying to carjack someone, a drug deal gone bad. This is completely different than a lot of those other cases. You know, what was going through my head was not, yeah, I'm going to go and commit a crime. It was, these guys mean business. They're about to pummel and rob me. There's no police around. Many of them have masks over their faces. They'll never be identified. There's no consequences for them. If they beat me and rob me, 